What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with Samsung Galaxy A34 5G camera tips and tricks. So stay tuned if you want to learn how to get the most out of the various cameras on your device. Now the first thing I want to do is go over the actual cameras that we're getting here with the Galaxy A34 5G, and we do have quite a few of them. Now starting off with the rear cameras, we have a 48 megapixel main camera, an 8 megapixel ultra wide angle camera that can capture images at up to 123 degrees, and we have a 5 megapixel macro camera for close up images. And then we have a 13 megapixel front facing camera. Now this phone does support portrait mode for both the front and rear cameras, which is really nice. And with this phone, we're getting 4K video recording with the front and rear cameras as well. So despite this phone being a more entry-level budget mid-range device, it really does give us a lot of different features related to the cameras. Now here's how things look on the camera app, and this is with the main rear camera right now. Then from there, to get to the ultra wide angle camera, you're gonna go over here to 0.5. Now, in the ultra wide mode, you'll see that you're able to fit a lot more content into a single frame here. So I'm a big fan of the ultra wide camera, and it especially comes in handy when I'm on vacation. Maybe I want to capture a photo of a large building or my surroundings. It's really useful for that especially. But then going back here, heading over to the more tab, you'll see right there, macro, and that's for the macro camera. So with the macro camera, you can get very close up and have things be in really good detail, which is really useful. So that's especially awesome. Then from there, we can go over to fun mode, which gives us some different overlays and things like that. Kind of interesting, maybe give it a try, but overall, it's not really for me. Then there's portrait mode, so you can get those nice blurred out backgrounds. Now with portrait mode, you actually have the ability here to adjust the blur. So if you want less blur in the background, you can do that. Or if you want more blur, you can make that customization as well. So that's really useful. You can also crop out to take a group selfie. And then if you want to, you can take standard selfies too. So you don't have to have portrait mode with the front facing camera when taking a selfie. And then another thing as well, when you're using portrait mode with the rear camera, you can also adjust the blur effect. Now heading back over to that more tab, there's a lot of different options here. So I definitely recommend exploring all of these. There's a pro mode, pro video, single take, night mode, food mode, panorama, macro as I showed you before, super slow-mo, slow motion, and hyperlapse. But if you want to take any of these and put them on this bottom slider, you can also very easily make that customization. So go over to this plus button, and then from there, you can pick up any of these and put them down here. So for example, I'm going to take the macro camera option and put it down here below in between fun mode and portrait mode. Also another thing too is that if you want to remove any of these other than just the standard photo and video modes, you can pick that up and toss it in the more tab. So that's nice, but I'll go to save here. And then now you can see we do have a toggle for the macro camera in this bottom slider. Now moving on, we have quite a few different options up top here. Now in the upper right corner, you can go here for a variety of different filters. So you can also adjust these filters too to make them less intense if you want. So that's really cool. Nice that we get all these various options there. So definitely recommend trying those out. We can also then go up here and do motion photos. So motion photos is kind of similar to how Apple does live photos. Now, I personally don't find that to be very useful, so I typically don't keep that enabled. And then another downside of using that feature is that it does use up a lot of extra space on the phone, but it is there if you want to use it. Then up here, this area is pretty interesting. So first thing I want to say is this phone has a 48 megapixel main camera. However, by default, when you take photos with it, it does not actually take those photos at 48 megapixels. Now, if you want to, you can go up here and choose 3x4, 48 megapixel, and take those 48 megapixel photos, and it does work really well. But the reason why that's not the default option is because taking photos in that full 48 megapixels will fill up the storage on your phone a lot faster. Now heading back up here again, there's the 3x4 default, there's 9x16 or 16x9 based on how you're capturing the image. That's great for video thumbnails, for example. We also have 1x1, so square, and then there's also full, which takes up the entire display here on the phone. So really cool that we get those various options there. Also up here is the timer. So there's no timer, two seconds, five seconds, or 10 seconds. That potentially could be really useful. There's also the flash. So you can have no flash, flash on automatic, or you can have flash on at all times. And if you're in video mode, which I'll show you more of this in a second, you can have the flash on at all times and have kind of like a flashlight going while you're capturing your video. Now heading over to video mode here, there's a few different abilities. So the first thing is you can change the aspect ratio 
for your videos as well. So you can do 16 by nine, one by one or full. You can also go up here to change the video resolution. So we have options of 720p at 30 FPS. We have 1080p at 30. We have 1080p at 60. And then there is 4K at 30, which is also known as UHD. There's also this option up here for super steady mode. And that'll give you some additional stabilization. Now, in addition to all this, there are more settings up here in this gear icon. So if you go up there, you'll see a lot of different options. Now, some of these are already enabled by default, such as scene optimizer. You can also scan QR codes with the camera here on the phone, which is really useful, especially lately. There's shot suggestions, so you'll get on-screen guides to help you line up great shots. But let's go to this one. This is swipe shutter button, and by default, it is to take a burst shot. So let's go back here, and basically if I swipe on that shutter button, it's gonna take a bunch of photos. So it just took 13 photos right there, but heading back over to here, there's an option for create GIF or GIF. And then if you do the same function of holding down the shutter button, it'll now create that GIF or GIF image. So here's the preview of that image that I just created. We also have watermark. Now I did enable that on my own. It's not enabled by default, but that's a really useful feature, at least for me as a tech reviewer. So basically it'll add a watermark to your photos. Now in my situation, I test out a lot of different smartphones, so it's nice knowing what phone took what photo. So it'll show the name of the phone right here. But if you want to, you can edit that to put anything you want. You can also add the date and time, which is pretty nice. And then you can also change the font and also the alignment for the actual watermark itself. We also have high efficiency pictures, which will save photos in an HEIF format. Now that's not always compatible with every app or service, but that is an option if you don't want to take up as much space. There's also high efficiency videos using another codec, but for videos, but it is similar in concept. There's also save selfies as previewed, so save selfies and selfie videos as they appear in the preview without flipping them. We have auto FPS. So it'll record brighter videos in low light conditions by automatically optimizing the frame rate in video mode that's already enabled. Video stabilization, super important, that's already enabled as well. Auto HDR, that's usually a good thing that people like, but that is enabled by default. We also have grid lines, but we'll give that a try right now. And with grid lines, it will give you the rule of thirds essentially, so you can better line up your photos or videos as well. There's also location tags, so add tags to your photos and videos so you can see what location they're taken in. We also have shooting methods, so this is pretty interesting. There's quite a few good things in here. So starting off, we have press volume keys. So by default, if you do volume up or volume down, it'll take a photo or record a video, which is nice and helpful. But if you want to, instead, you can have that act as a zoom in or zoom out function, or you can actually have it control the system volume just like the volume keys typically do in other apps. But let's try the zoom in and zoom out. So we'll do volume up to zoom in, and then volume down to zoom out, and it'll even take you all the way out to the ultra wide camera. We also have voice commands, so you can say certain things, and it'll start recording a video or taking a photo. So let's try that. Smile. There we go. Cheese. There we go. There's also floating shutter button. So that's pretty self-explanatory, but with that enabled, we have a secondary shutter button and you can move it anywhere throughout the camera app here. So that's nice. So very convenient or potentially convenient based on what you're trying to do here. And then finally, this one is enabled by default, but show palm. So if you're in this mode and you show your palm to the camera, it'll basically replicate as if you were to press the shutter button. So let's try that. There we go. That's a little bit difficult to do, by the way, with the camera recording everything as well. And then we also have settings to keep. So this is pretty nice. So if there's certain settings that you find yourself changing with the phone and you want the phone to keep them as the default, you can change that here. And then the final thing I want to do is show you a quick and easy way to access the camera app on the device. And you can do this from anywhere throughout the operating system. And all you have to do is just double press on the power button. So let's try that right now. And there we go. It took us to the camera app. Let's try that one more time. And that works really well. So that's a nice hidden feature that most people don't know about. But this concludes my video on camera tips and tricks for the Samsung Galaxy A34 5G. Hopefully this video helped you learn a lot more about the various cameras on your device and how to make the most of mobile photography here on the phone. But if you enjoyed the video, definitely give it a thumbs up. Make sure to sub to the channel. But with all that said, this is Kevin and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and have a great rest of your day.